Peace and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Light and coming back again with some more spiritual vittles. And today I'm going in on my top seven ancestor offerings. This is a good one, family. This is a good one. My top seven ancestor offerings. This is a good one because a lot of people have their ancestor altar up, but they're still unsure what type of offerings they should be given. And I've given a bunch of offerings, but here's my top seven to get you started. The first offering, food. Food, your ancestors need food. They're not physically biting and chewing and eating the food, but what they're doing is taking the energy of the food and they're using the energy of the food to sustain themselves. When our ancestors transition, resources are very slim on their side, on the other side. And we don't know the next time that they're going to get a good meal. So they use the energy of the food to help them out, especially the energy within meat. There's something about the energy with the meat that really helps sustain your ancestors. Regardless if they eat pork or not, some of your ancestors for sure ate pork. I don't eat pork, I don't eat beef, but I do give that to my ancestors, especially when I really want to connect with them. You know what I mean? If I'm really working out something with them, I want some help, I'll put a nice steak, potato, and beans on there. A lot of good, a lot of good protein and a lot of good energy in that food. Another thing that my second favorite or top offering to the ancestors is simply water water if you're new with setting your ancestor altar up there's no telling when the last time your ancestors had a good fresh drink of water and the same energy within food there's a consciousness that's within water and that energy within water can help sustain themselves as well can you imagine transitioning and you're just thirsty for days for years and you don't know if anyone in your family is going to help you out Make sure if you don't do anything else, put fresh water for your ancestors on your altar. We don't even give our ancestors tap water. We don't drink tap water, and I wouldn't give my ancestors tap water. Yeah, they can probably drink it and take the energy from the water, but I only give my ancestors things that I eat and drink. You know what I mean? I don't drink vitamin D milk, but I don't give my ancestors vitamin D milk. Now, if I had an ancestor that really loved milk and cookies, I love some milk and cookies, Chris, then I would give them some. But again, I don't drink vitamin D milk, so I don't give my ancestors vitamin D milk. Third thing that you can give your ancestors, liquor. A lot of my ancestors love to drink. They love to drink. And when you transition, more than likely, if you haven't transitioned to the higher realms, you still have the same vices. Now, I don't put liquor on my altar every day, but I do have a nice bottle of wine on my altar. You know, I do peace and blessings to my great aunt Emma. I called her Annie. A lot of people called her Big Emma. Her real name was Emma Lou Lane Barnett. And she's the reason that I am the, 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 the guy that I am today. She loved a drink, though, but she loved hard and she taught me a lot of life lessons. She kept me safe. Made sure I was fed, made sure I had shelter, helped my mom raise me, and I love her for that. So every now and then, I do give her a little liquor. She loves whiskey, so I make sure I give her a little whiskey every now and then. I swear that whiskey be going down. I don't know if it's evaporating or what, but I know Annie be sipping on that whiskey. Another thing you can give your ancestor offerings, flowers. They love flowers. They love, they smell good. It's life, and when you put a flower on your altar, it kind of goes into this petrified state where it lasts for a long time. It lasts for a long time, family. Try it out. Put a flower on your altar and see how long it lasts. You'll be amazed. You got a bouquet of roses, take one out, put in some water, put on your altar, leave the other ones out. The other ones will be long gone. You can buy roses three, four times. That one on your altar will be in this petrified state. It, that happens if you're going to your altar all the time. If you're going to your altar like once a week, every fourth Friday of the month, you're not going to have a lot of power, a lot of energy at your altar, and that won't work. So don't be like Chris and Light and say it'll last forever. It won't be like that if you're not going every day, family. Okay, don't fool yourself like that. Don't fool yourself like that. Another thing you can put on your altar, personal items. Personal items, things that your ancestors liked. Anything that your ancestors like, put on your altar, family. 
you know, my great aunt, excuse me, my grandmother loved, she liked those little bitty peppermints, the white ones with the little red stripes. She loved those. So I make sure I keep some of those on my ancestor altar. I make sure I keep that on my ancestor altar. My auntie loved to sew. So I got like a little, it's like a fake tomato with needles that she used to use to keep her little needles in when she was sewing. I keep that on my altar. The one of the biggest things you can put on your altar is ancestor money. Ancestor money, ancestor money, ancestor money, family. Your ancestors need things. And again, I, I say this a million times. Resources are really scarce where they are. Now, again, when you burn ancestor money, money just doesn't fall out the sky on your ancestors' feet. It doesn't work like that. The energy within the currency, within the ancestor money, open up different doors of opportunity for your ancestors' family. So don't think if you burn $5 million of ancestor money, they're going to get $5 million. It doesn't work like that. They'll get $5 million worth of opportunity on the other end. Now, if you burn real money, that's like gold bullion. You can burn a $5 bill, and depending on your ancestors' karma, that $5 bill may turn into $5 trillion, you know? So when I always say this, when you're burning ancestor money, well, real live money, like a dollar bill, I always put someone's name on it. I always put someone who had like a good life, good karma. Because if, you, if you're burning money for someone who had, was like an evildoer or a low vibratory person, it may dwindle the, the energy within that currency. You burn one dollar, they may get one cent. Okay, family? So that's one reason why I stick to ancestor money. That's just me personally. Lastly, the seventh thing that ancestors love on the altar is smell goods, perfume, incense, things like that. They love that. I make sure I burn some Palo Santo and some incense, even sage every time I'm at my altar. I even got like a little bitty metal bowl where I pour in some Florida water or Palo Santo water. And I burn that and make the room smell good. Me and my wife, we have an ancestor room where we get it in. She's on one wall, I'm on the other wall. We cut the lights out, light them candles, and we get stuff burning. We get to praying, and it just creates this spiritual cipher that I just can't explain. We keep the door shut. When we open the door, we smell all that remnants of ancestor burnt money, um, sage, palo santo, incense, all the good smells that we put in there. Resin, it just smells like, smells like heaven in there, family. Smells like heaven. So those are my top seven things, you top seven offerings for your ancestors. But if you have deities or gods on your altar, you can give them offerings too. They don't need the offerings, but it just shows your humility, especially when you want to work with them. You need their help for something. Don't expect if you just, if you just let's say you got pulled over by the cops and you needed some help. You just can't be like, I'm going to reach out to Ganesha. And you haven't worked with Ganesha, you haven't built a relationship with them. The energy reserves that's in these deities, I don't want to say they're similar to humans, but you have to connect with them first. You have to entangle your consciousness with them, family, before they'll work with you. And they may never work with you. No telling what you've done in your past life. If you're if you, if you're still smoking, drinking, using the, the language of demons and doing all these evil things, walking, watching negative movies and things like that, embracing poverty consciousness, they may not choose to work with you. You know what I mean? So whenever you want to work with a high divine form, we're talking about gods here. You got to come correct. You're already a human. You're already vibrating in this third dimensional reality. These beings are high vibratory. You got to come to them correct. You'll never really be on their level. But if they see, like, look at that human trying. He stopped cursing. He's not smoking weed. And he's not drinking anymore. I'm going to work with that human. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to surrender to your own desires. Like, you know what? I'm not doing it no more. I know we make me feel good. Liquor make me get crunk. Sometimes you got to come clean when you want to work with a higher divine force, family. It's your choice. It's your choice. So on that note, family, those are my seven top ancestor offerings that you can give. And I hope you got some spiritual vittles. So until next time, peace and love. Winning. His name is Houdini. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Shout out to my 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 wife's watcher. His name is Houdini. You know, Houdini protects us while we sleep. And um, I thought about putting Houdini in this video. And um, I made a couple videos with Houdini, and I forgot to introduce him. He just sit on the he just sits on the counter in our bedroom, watching us. Not the counter, but the dresser, watching us, making sure we we sleep good. And he's our he's our protector, Houdini. Shout out to Houdini. One more time. Shout out to Houdini. Shout out to Houdini. And on that note, family, peace and love. Winning.